feral bee juice. Welcome back to ABV TV where I drink beer on the internet and occasionally you watch. Uh, today we are drinking Feral Brewing's Bee Juice. It is a East Coast IPA, which is just another term for New England IPA or Hazy IPA or you know what I mean. And let's see the pouring ability today. What kids? That ain't too bad. In fact, I am pretty happy with how that's poured out. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Again, you've got that nice opaque, cloudy yellow colour, nice big white head. That beautiful fruity aroma. That as I've mentioned in previous videos, it's pretty much what we expect from a New England IPA. So you're gonna get your citrus, you're gonna get your stone fruits, you'll get that tropical aroma. Picking up like a little bit of orange. A bit of grapefruit, maybe a touch of mango. Oh, sensational. This is a, a great beer from, from Feral Brewing Company. Um, they really nailed a, a good hazy IPA uh, early on in, in the, the, the wave that was, that is still to this day of uh, hazy IPAs. Um, and it's just, uh, really really good sort of a, a beer that comes in at six percent i want to say i'm gonna say it's yeah six percent um now the one thing that i didn't do that it mentions on the can here is roll before opening so kind of like what you would do with cooper's green cooper's parlor uh, give it a bit of a roll just to get that sort of sediment and, and, and yeast and, and protein through to make it a little bit more more cloudy and hazy. Um, but it's personal preference. Personally, I actually don't like doing that. Even with Coopers, I don't like doing that. Um, I don't really like that sort of extra yeasty flavour that, that comes through. And so I just sort of steer away from that a little bit. I haven't done it with the Feral before, to be perfectly honest. Um, so it may not be that bad, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a creature of habit that is my weed drinking ideals. Flavor-wise, um, quite light as you would expect from a New England IPA. Um, some of those aromas that I mentioned at the top um, do come through uh, a little bit, so no, definitely that sort of um, stone fruit kind of flavour is, is what I'm mostly sort of picking up. Um, uh, a bit of citrus in there as well, maybe um, sort of a, a passion, passion fruit kind of flavour um, in amongst the mix as well. It's also quite um, quite sharp and bubbly on the tongue, but uh, generally a, a pretty pretty crisp and um, easy drinking beer. And for an IPA, IPAs seem to be easier and easier to drink. And I don't know whether that's just me and my drinking tolerance, or the palate, or, or well, maybe that's just how they're being designed. But you no, know, compared to 
when I first started drinking IPAs uh, many years ago where it was very hop driven and, and very bitter. Um, no, we, no, a good IPA was in the, the IBU range of 70 or 80 and, now, and, and the malts were quite heavier and, and um, a bit more sweeter, caramelly in flavour. Now we get very pale, light malt, um, uh, still hopped or buggery, but because it's late or, or dry hopped, you, you get very, very little uh, IBUs with, with IBAs now because everybody wants to make a hazy, which I'm not criticising and I feel like I, I tend to be a bit um, critical or sarcastic uh, when it comes to that. Um, I, I do love a, a, a hazy IPA. I think I've become a little bit of a hazy boy, but I also realise that uh, as a beer style and a bit of a beer trend, everybody's doing it, um, which I like to the extent that, you know, especially now that we're getting beer pushed through into to, to more and more good beer, I should say, being pushed through into to more and more people. Um, no, there's, there's like 130 different beer styles. Uh, if you go by the uh, BJCP guidelines and everybody seems to want to focus on one. But in terms of that, um, I think Feral nailed the, the guidelines for a New England IPA uh, pretty well. It basically has everything you sort of, uh, from a traditional New England IPA. Um, and the colour, I'm always amazed by the colour of, of beer. Um, and I don't go on about it enough, but no, like, I love the fact that beer can be and a rainbow of colours really, you know, from your from your your white ales and your wheat beers and, and white IPAs through to obviously your, your hazies and you get into your slightly darker, um, some pales can be darker, golden ales through to IPAs, through to reds, red IPAs and then obviously into browns and blacks, black IPAs, stouts, porters and, and the like. No, I love the fact that no, you can get a, a rainbow of, of colours with beer and if it's a fruited beer, whether that's a fruited sour or a fruited lager or a fruited pale, then you can have goddamn any colour you, you want. Um, I always get a, I always get, you know, a little tickle pink by you know, um, little bright coloured beers and that's obviously due to things like your, your fruit additions and, and, and whatnot making that nice sort of vibrant colour on the back of a very pale malt bill. I enjoy it, I think it's great, that's why I, that's what I love about beer, it's it's visually visually appealing, um, probably the same way as 18 year old girls drinking cocktails, uh, uh, mesmerised by the, the pretty colours, so am I as a 40 odd year old man. So Feral Brewing, um, if you don't know, coming out of WA, they've been uh, a staple in the craft beer scene for, for a long time. Probably up there is probably one of the originators. I think they're 18 or 20 years now. I know they did an anniversary beer not that long ago, which was a West Coast IPA. Uh, I feel like that was for their 20th. I could be massively wrong, but you're watching this on the internet, so just open a tab and Google it or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, they've been around for, for a long time. They're owned by Coca-Cola, which most people don't realise. Um, but they're one of the, the, the few breweries that have been bought out by uh, a major uh, organisation and they really haven't strayed too much from what they do um, from the original days. The upside to it's being owned by Coca-Cola is that you can get feral beer pretty much anywhere, and especially with Biggie Juice. It's probably the first commercial New England IPA that you could get at Dan Murphy's or BOUS or wherever, wherever you, you, you can find these uh, now. Um, 
And I feel that might have led the, the haze craze a little bit for, for some of those big bottle shops. Um, I know in 2020, I think BWS, their uh, hazy sales uh, were astronomical, something like 500% increase. But that's because everybody loves them and more and more brewers are, are doing them and they realise and they've capitalised and uh, started to pick up, pick up more and more. The fact that now you get obviously feral, you can get um, Black Ops Hazy, you can get the Dayton, some of their hazy range is, is available from, from a BWS. Um, then you know, same with all those major retail liquor stores. Um, but ideally, where you can, you should always support local and your local independent bottle shops because they're the ones who, who really champion craft beer and still champion craft beer. And you know, if you really want to expand that palette and really want to delve deep into craft beer, go to an independent bottle shop. Um, if you're just starting out, look, Dan Murphy's and BWS are, are perfect for those who are, who are starting off in their journey to get away from drinking fucking twoies and VB. Um, but if you're, if you're now into it and you're gonna dive into that uh, rabbit hole that is craft beer, support local because they will have um, a much wider range and more unique beers and uh, support local breweries and the, the local industry plus you get some some pretty bad imports as well and then all well, your money's going to be gone because you spend it all on craft beer <sighs> that's my story anyway cheers Kids, Feral, Biggie Juice, East Coast IPA. You know where to find him, you know where to get him, you know the deal. Go out and get him. He's a good beer.